A leap year happens every four years, right? Wrong. Telling time is an important aspect of being human. For millennia, humans have been working out different ways of telling time, and I find this whole topic fascinating. I've made several videos on clocks already, but today I'm talking leap years, which this year, at the time I released, 2024, is a leap year. And leap years aren't as recent as you might think. First, why do we need leap years? Well, the planet Earth doesn't care for our calendars. You'll have been told that a year is 365 days, which is approximately true, but it's actually a little longer than that, perhaps closer to 365.25 days, which means that every four years, it's as though we've added an extra day. If we don't count for that, eventually the seasons will be all out of whack. In a few years, it might not add to much, but in a hundred years, being almost a whole month out of a whack is problematic. And in a millennia, the winter and summer will have totally switched places, which is not good. We realized that this was going to be a problem. So all the way back in 46 BC, under Emperor Julius Caesar, the Julian calendar was introduced in ancient Rome, which had a leap day or an extra day added to February every four years. And that was that. However, it wasn't quite as simple as that. Remember the figure 365.25? Well, that's actually rounded up. The actual length of days it takes for Earth to orbit the sun is closer to 365.2422. And that little fraction of a day over a long time adds up. It averages out to be about 11 minutes a year, which isn't a lot, but when we add it up, over a long time, it adds up. Between the installation of the Julian calendar and the 1570s, the years had drifted by 10 days. Not heaps, but certainly drifting. Something had to be done. Leap years were working at slowing the drifting of years and seasons, but after enough time, they were still letting it drift. They weren't perfect. So with the help of mathematicians and astronomers, under Pope Gregory VIII, the Gregorian calendar was introduced, which was very similar to the Julian calendar, but the leap year had a rule change. It took the Julian rule and of adding an additional day every four years, and now we have years evenly divisible by four are leap years, with the exception of centurial years that are not evenly divisible by 400. A centurial year being a year divisible by 100, like 1800 or 1900. So every 100 years, the year is not a leap year, where in the Julian calendar, it will be, with the exception of years divisible by 400. So 1800 was not a leap year, 1900 not a leap year, 2000 is divisible by 400, and so it was a leap year, but 2100 will not be a leap year. And I'd love to say that I'll be around to see the next centurial year to say, ooh, it's every four years, but it's not a leap year. I'll be 104 in 2100. My great grandmother made it to 104, so I'm hopeful. But I love what leap years say about humanity. For within a human lifetime, the effects of the lack of a leap day wouldn't be felt a lot. If you lived 100 years, your spring would start 24 days later at your end of life than at the start of it, which you might notice, but I dare say not heaps. But over 2000 years ago, we decided that that wasn't good enough. So added leap years, where over 1500 years, the seasons shifted by 10 days. 11 minutes added per year on average makes almost no impact to a single or multiple human lifetimes, but over thousands of years, it does. So we decided to amend leap years to being every four years, but not when it's divisible by 100, but yes, when it's divisible by 400, meaning that the average year is actually 365.2425 days, which is very close to the 365.2422 days it takes for Earth to orbit the sun. But wait, what about that 0 0.0003 of a year that we haven't accounted for? Well, that is less than half a minute a year and would take about 3,300 years to be a day out of step, which is a long time. And I don't really know how we'll account for it long term, but I'm sure that we will. But it's what leap years tell us about humans that I think is really cool. And it fills me with a sense of hope. 
we have the ability to be forward thinking and think about the people who will be living on Earth centuries and millennia into the future. We did this so that our seasons didn't shift and we've been having leap years for literally thousands of years if you've been in a place that uses the Julian calendar and then the Gregorian calendar. The Gregorian calendar of course being the most dominant calendar in the world today and it's likely the one that you're using. That's pretty cool. But what I hope it means for us is that we can still be forward thinking and consider the needs of those in the distant future when making choices now. We have work to do with some of the biggest challenges facing humanity today. Climate change being a pretty major concern for the future. But looking at our past, I think it's within our nature to want to do something about it. I am simplifying things here a bit, and perhaps I'm being a bit naive, but I know it's within our capability to think forward and to make the changes we need to now, even if those changes are fairly significant. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something. If you did, please be sure to let me know in the comments below and with the like button. And feel free to subscribe to That's Pretty Cool for more videos that inspire in me a sense of curiosity and wonder. Thanks again, take care, stay curious, and I will see you next time.